नमस्कार दिस इज डॉक्टर अनित श्रीवास्तव एंड आई एम बैक अगेन विद अनदर लेक्चर ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल माइक्रोबायोलॉजी सीरीज सो फार वी हैव बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट द माइक्रोबियल स्ट्रक्चर एंड फंक्शन माइक्रोबियल न्यूट्रिशन एंड ग्रोथ एंड देन इन लास्ट टू लेक्चर्स वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द माइक्रोबियल मेटाबॉलिज्म सो इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट the microbial metabolism in which we were talking about the aerobic respiration and in aerobic respiration we talked about different catabolic pathways we included we, we covered the glycolysis we talked about the krebs cycle about pentose phosphate pathway electron transport chain so in this lecture we are talking we are going to talk about the anaerobic Uh, about the anaerobic respiration or the anaerobic fermentation so this is the part 3 of a microbial metabolism and now it is to understand what is anaerobic respiration so basically anaerobic respiration and aerobic re respiration the basic difference is that in aerobic respiration there is presence of oxygen the process is taking place under in the presence of oxygen whereas in case of anaerobic respiration it takes place in late in uh, absence of oxygen and one more important thing the electrons which are released uh, during the pathways they are actually accepted by the electron acceptors and in case of aerobic respiration the electron Now, uh, acceptor is oxygen. Whereas in case of anaerobic respiration, oxygen is will not act as the uh, electron acceptors other than oxygen like the sulfates, uh, the uh, the fer the ferric ions and the fumarates. So these will be acting as the electron acceptors. So we can say that this aerobic respiration it takes place in absence of oxygen. and it is a process in which the electrons are transferred to electron acceptors such as nitrate sulfate carbon dioxide fumarate etc and many bacteria and archaea obtain energy for growth by anaerobic respiration so there are different microorganisms which follow different pathways for forming a product under different fermentation conditions and in this under anaerobic conditions we will be talking about basically about the pyruvate now what is pyruvate so if we remember the glycolysis the end product of the glycolysis after the glucose metabolism ended with a with two molecules of pyruvate so either this pyruvate will enter into the krebs cycle through the aerobic fermentation or it will enter into the anaerobic pathway by uh, alcoholic fermentation or the lactic acid fermentation now before going before entering or before going into the detail uh, about the uh, about these uh, anaerobic fermentation we should just brief about the fermentation you all know that fermentation it is a process it is a process basically which converts sugars into acids or alcohols in the presence of microorganisms and mainly yeast converts the sugars into alcohol whereas if we talk about the lactic acid fermentation mostly bacteria are involved in the lactic acid fermentation so fermentation if we uh, define fermentation it is a process that works in absence of oxygen and the electron acceptors are organic substrates like ethanol carbon dioxide etc so now as i was talking about the anaerobic respiration so these this is this table actually defines about the aerobic as well as the anaerobic uh, respiration 
about the details of the electron acceptors involved about the reduced products as well as the organisms which performs these or undergoes these processes so here we can see that the aerobic in, the, in case of aerobic respiration the electron acceptor is oxygen and the reduced products are water and microorganisms which are involved are all aerobic basically fungi bacteria and all protists now if we talk about the anaerobic then we can see that the electron acceptor are nitrate sulfate carbon dioxide element sulfur and iron and selenium oxide fumarate as well and the reduced products are the h2s methane a uh, cuprous then arsenic and we have succinate so this is the list of the details of all organ uh, microorganisms those are involved under the aerobic as well as anaerobic respiration now when we talk about the anaerobic fermentation when we talk about the anaerobic fermentation so there are two types of anaerobic fermentation first one is the ethanol fermentation and the second one is the lactic acid fermentation so basically if i just go in brief about the glycolysis so glucose uh end up with a product or with the two molecules of pyruvate in glycolysis which takes place in the cytoplasm of the cell so when pyruvate is formed so either it will enter into the krebs cycle or it will follow the anaerobic uh pathway and in anaer anaerobic pathway uh we can have this ethanol as well as the lactic acid fermentation so ethanol fermentation it is a two step reaction process how two step reaction process we all know that this glucose molecule is converting into this pyruvate this is converting into pyruvate so this pyruvate actually is formed by the formation of two atp and and two nadh molecule so if we look at the total yield of the glycolysis actually two atps are consumed and four atps are formed so the net the net atp is the net number of atp are two atp whereas two nad will be reduced to nads generating generating six molecules of atp so the net gain during the glycolysis is 8 atp so now after the formation of the two pyruvate molecules so this pyruvate now will form two molecules of acetyl dehyde in the presence of pyruvate decarboxylase and two molecules of carbon dioxide will be removed so we can see that this pyruvate it is ch3 co cooh so now two molecules of pyruvate will it will release two carbon dioxide two carbon will be released from here and acetyl dehyde acetyl dehyde is ch3 ch o so now after the formation of this two molecules of acetyl dehyde this is actually the step 1 so here we can see that in step 1 two molecules of pyruvate formed as a product of glycolysis it is converted into two molecules of acetyl dehyde in the presence of this pyruvate decarboxylase and two molecules of co2 is released now entering into the second step this acetyl dehyde it will form these two molecules of acetyl dehyde it will convert into two molecules of ethanol so now the purpose now the purpose of this basically we should understand the purpose of this anaerobic fermentation here we can see 
that the during the formation of the two molecules of the ethanol from the acetaldehyde we can see that the NADH is oxidized to NAD plus so we can uh, we can recall that in case of this glucose metabolism through glycolysis NAD was, was reduced to NADH and forming the electro uh, reducing uh, into the uh, NADH and here we can see that this NADH is NAD. So now the main purpose of this process, the main purpose of this process is to replenish the NAD, uh, uh, the NAD plus in the uh, glyco to replenish NAD in the process of glycolysis where it is required for the reduction for the reduction of NAD to NADH. So here we can see that several bacteria and yeast oxidized NADH to NAD by metabolizing through this fermentation process to replenish NAD for glycolysis because if NAD will not be available for glycolysis then the step where the glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate forms into into the uh, glycerol 1,3 biphosphate will be stopped and the glycolysis will not take place after that step. So now when we enter into the lactic acid fermentation, so lactic acid fermentation also we can see that the key or the main component here is pyruvate. So this pyruvate here also we can see that glucose through the process of the glycolysis is forming two molecules of pyruvate and two ADP. We can have this two ADP are converting into ATP. So uh, when it is, uh, so, but there are two molecules, so total generation of four ATP, two are consumed, so two ATP are there and two NADH. So, because here we are talking about the, we are starting with the one molecule, but it will end with the two molecules of pyruvate. So, we will have two NADH. So, here also the same thing NAD into NADH, but pyruvate when forms lactate in the presence of lactate dehydrogenase, there is an enzyme lactate dehydrogenase which converts this pyruvate into lactate. And again, we can see over here that the NADH is being oxidized to NAD plus. And the basically, the importance of this process is just to generate the NAD plus, which can be used further in the plus process of the glycolysis for the reduction of the NAD to NADH, which is the electron acceptor, and it donates. The, they, they accept the electrons from the uh, oxidized uh, molecule, oxidized sugar and they carry these electrons to the electron transport chain for the synthesis of the ATP. So, uh, if I brief it, the pyruvate molecules which are formed by, by from glycolysis, they are fermented to lactic acid in presence of lactate dehydrogenase. Now, basically, this lactic acid fermentation, it occurs in prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Lactose is converted to lactic acid using lactobacillus species. Basically, bacteria are involved in this process or lactic acid fermentation is carried by the bacteria. Uh, one more thing I would say that uh, this lactic acid fermentation, it also occurs in animal muscles. It is occurring in animal muscles because when we uh, do some kind of uh, uh, like uh, uh, exercises or so we are running, so there is a depletion of the oxygen. So in that case also, these this uh, fermentation is taking place and again they are just producing or regenerating the NAD plus for the glycolysis to occur. So basically, this is the basic concept behind the lactic acid as well as the ethanol fermentation and the production of the beer and beer and wine they are basically occurring through the uh, this uh, uh, ethanol fermentation now 
uh, when we talk about the lactic acid fermentation, we'll talk about the groups of lactic acid fermentation. Now, the groups which include uh, of the lactic acid fermentation, we would be talking about the homolactic and we would be talking about the heterolactic fermentation. Now, what is the difference between the homolactic and the heterolactic fermentation? So, uh, uh, if we talk about the homolactic fermentation, the homolactic fermentation, they use the embedded Mayerhoff pathway and directly reduced almost all pyruvate to lactate. Basically, we can say that the, the, the amount of pyruvate it, which is formed, so they are converting almost all the total amount of pyruvate to the lactate. And in this, we know that the, this lactic acid formation, fermentation, it takes place in the presence of this lactate dehydrogenase. So, here almost all the pyruvate is converted into the lactate. But in case of heterolactic fermentation, in case of heterolactic fermentation, apart from the lactate, considerable or some significant amounts of other products are also formed that is the ethanol and carbon dioxide. So basically, this is the basic difference about the homolactic as well as the lactic acid heterolactic fermentation. So now, uh, this is uh, the uh, basically the aim or the process of, uh, the, of this fermentation lactic acid as well as the fermentation taking place. So these are the fermenters is the fermentation pathway. So this the purpose of uh, this uh, uh, figure is just to show that uh, how, why the reoxidation of uh, this NADH uh, during the alcohol as well as the lactic acid fermentation is taking place. So we can see this like here I was telling you that uh, uh, the glucose uh, in the, this is the process of the glycolysis and we already already know about the process of the glycolysis. So this is the step where glucose and we are not showing it is straight away showing the glucose into glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate but we, in between we know that glucose in the presence of the hexokinase will form the glucose 6 phosphate then uh, fructokinase uh, glucose 6 phosphate will form fructose 6 phosphate then fructose 1 6 phosphate to glycerol dehyde so now this is the crucial step where the NADH is required and where NADA NAD is reduced to NADH plus H ions so suppose we need NAD, NAD as the electron acceptor over here. So if NAD is not present here, it will not be reduced to NADH. And finally, the product that is 1,3-phosphoglycerate will not be converted. And at this step only, the process of glycolysis will be stopped. So therefore, therefore, the requirement to regenerate or replenish the NAD through the process of this anaerobic fermentation is very important and crucial. And here clearly we can see that this NADH is reduced. Here we can see that this is NADH plus and NAD in this pathway NAD is forming to this is going in the glycolysis pathway and here also it is going into the glycolysis pathway and this NADH it is coming to this pyruvate and so this we can clearly understand that this is the glycolysis and how this fermentation pathway and what is very important among these pathways how they are helping each other to just maintain or to control the to control the carbohydrate metabolism. Uh, basically, uh, the references which has been uh, taken uh, are the from the Pelzar microbiology as well as uh, I have been uh, uh, referring to the Prescott microbiology. So, I hope uh, this uh, lecture would have been very much useful to all of you. And uh, I think that's all for uh, for this uh, much uh, this for this anaerobic fermentation. Thank you.